Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first ever webinar with Cheryl Dermatology. We are extremely excited to be here today with all of your favorite people. We have Dr. Cheryl, Dr. Loriano, and Nancy. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Hello. <laughs> I, I see a lot of you joining right now, so I'll just give a minute or two for everyone to get situated. But in case you forgot, you are joining our webinar to introduce our brand new laser called the Laze MD Ultra by Lutronic. And we're also going to talk about Caralase, our new hair loss treatment. We have a little presentation for you all, and then we will open up at the end for question and answer. So if you have any questions while the presentation is going, you can use the little Q&A feature on Zoom. If you're calling in on your phone or watching on Facebook, you can try and use the chat feature and we'll try and get through as many of your questions as possible. They can be questions for Dr. Cheryl or Dr. Loriano or for Nancy, since we have all three of them here at your disposal. So let's see, just wait one more minute. I see a lot of you still joining. But thank you so much for joining us today. We're very excited at Cheryl Dermatology to introduce our brand new laser. So without further ado, um, this is also being recorded. So you can also go back and watch the recording if you ever need. So in case you're not already familiar with your dream team, we have Dr. Cheryl, who's in the middle, Dr. Loriano, and Nancy, who is our in-house esthetician. In case some of you didn't know, we yes, we have one. And then of course, Dr. Cheryl and Dr. Loriano are BARD certified dermatologists. So let's get right into this. Dr. Cheryl, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much, Risa. I just want to thank everybody for joining us for our first live Zoom webinar. And we're very, very excited. Uh, the past year has been incredibly stressful for everybody. And while all this has been going on behind the scenes, myself, Dr. Loriano, Nancy, and the rest of the staff have been busy building this state-of-the-art facility, which I hope some of you have been to already. Um, and besides the state-of-the-art facility, trying to continue to build a state-of-the-art practice catering to everybody's medical and cosmetic dermatology needs. And throughout COVID and um, even in the most recent few months, there have been incredible advances in technology. It's the most amazing experience to be in dermatology these days because technology is just moving along at a very, very fast pace. Lutronic Ultra Laze MD is one of our new purchases and we're really excited about it. We've had it for about four months and we've drawn, done a, a, a tremendous amount of procedures and really getting fantastic results. This particular laser is extremely helpful with texture and tone. It's a very comfortable procedure with min really minimal pain. It's fairly quick. It takes me about 15 to 20 minutes. Yes, you can use a little bit of topical anesthesia, but it's not as painful as other laser procedures have been in the past. The first uh, slide there, you can see the tip and you can see two little rollers on the tip. And the laser glides over the surface of the skin. And when it glides over the surface, it's creating a very superficial injury of the skin. And we're gonna show you a quick video of exactly what it looks like as we glide it over the surface of the skin. And you can see that the patient is lying with her eyes covered because you cannot look at laser light. And we use that device to quickly glide it over the entire cheek, the forehead and the neck. And as we do so, this superficial injury is destroying collagen. And as we destroy the collagen, the collagen is stimulated to rejuvenate and stimulated to remodel. It also is injuring some of the pigment and when it injures that pigment, the pigment slowly starts to uh, desquamate over several weeks time. So as you can see, it's a, a fairly straightforward treatment where we run it all over your face, neck. It can be also used to treat the chest or the decollete area, as well as your arms if you have sun damage there. This device, besides texture and tone, 
can be very, very helpful with the brown spots that we all get in these various locations. It can be also helpful for fine lines, wrinkles, and some mild scarring. I think you can move on to the next slide. And again, you can see in this video showing you what you look like right after treatment. There is almost like a sunburn reaction. It does feel warm, just like a sunburn. That sunburn feeling will last approximately two to three hours and it dissipates. And as it dissipates, the redness on the area treated will slowly dissipate as well, which means that there's very, very little downtime when we do this laser. As the redness dissipates, you'll get almost a sandpaper-like feeling in the areas that are treated. You won't see the actual desquamation of the skin, but you'll slowly start to see that your skin smooths out and the tone and texture improves over the next several weeks. And you can see this patient whose eyes recovered just post-treatment, just very, very red. And again, that goes away fairly quickly. There is very little downtime to this procedure, which is one of the beauties of doing it. Next slide. Now, when we use this device, we're also creating little micro channels in the skin, little tiny little injuries, surface injuries, which allow the uh, introduction of various cosmeceuticals, growth factors, retinoids, and certain other therapeutics to treat brown spots on the skin. And by applying them post-treatment, we're getting better absorption and improving the overall texture by adding what we call cosmeceuticals. And this is one of the hottest areas in laser treatment right now, and that's called laser-assisted drug delivery. And what that means is besides the injury and the collagen stimulation that the device creates, it also is a way to make micro channels and allow absorption of certain types of chemo, well, not chemo, cosmeceuticals to improve uh, growth, uh, growth of, of collagen and uh, epidermal cells and really improve with, with the aid of these other uh, um, types of serums. Next slide. And just to give you an idea of some of the results that we've been getting in the office, although these are not my slides, we are getting similar results. Um, generally, you need three treatments. You can see the before and three treatments after. Treatments are generally done with three to, uh, every three to four weeks. And you can certainly see that many of the brown spots have significantly lightened but you can also see that there's a very tremendous difference in the texture and the tone of the skin. I'd also like to point out, go back for one second, Lisa, that although subtle, there is absolutely an improvement in the fine lines on her face, specifically on the cheek area in the middle there. Next slide. And again, you can see definitely there is an improvement in the tone and the texture here. That one brown spot did not improve so much, but there are other devices and other treatments that can be done to improve that. But here we're really trying to demonstrate the improved tone and texture. And the analogy I make is it's almost as though we're trying to airbrush you. We're not getting you quite airbrushed, but as close to airbrush as we possibly can. Next slide. And again, more improvement, tone, texture, brown spots. Next slide. The one beautiful thing it, about this device is you can see the speckled pigment on her face and just by rolling it over the whole face. And again, this is four treatments. It doesn't happen overnight. There is a very, very dramatic improvement of all the speckled pigment on her face and also the fine lines, tone and texture, as I keep telling you. Next slide. There are some people that have some very, very dramatic sun damage and all these brown spots, many people refer to them as liver spots or they refer to them as sun spots and they really are sun spots. These spots are all due to excessive sun. 
And it's impressive that with a device with very little downtime that takes 15 minutes over three to, excuse me, over three to four months, we can get this much improvement in the overall appearance. Next slide. And again, more examples of just the same idea, texture, tone, brown spots. The other really interesting feature of this particular laser is, is that it is very safe to use on all skin types. It can be used to treat darker skin tones like this Asian American woman right here, and even African American skin. In the past, we've had to be extremely cautious when we use certain laser devices because on darker skin, they can cause problems. You can, uh, they can, if, if not used correctly, and even when used correctly, you can get unwanted brown patches and some scarring. So the idea that we can treat all, uh, treat all skin types is really fantastic. Next slide, please. And again, more examples dark pigment in the face, all gone, not all gone. Improved significantly, I would say so. And again, more examples of re rejuvenation and pigment change. We have our first question, Dr. Cheryl. Um, sure. I have a lot of freckles, would this treatment lighten them? Yes, you would have to be examined, but if your freckles are similar to some of the uh, photos that we've uh, showed so far, then yes, you would be able to improve many of these spots. Next slide, please. And again, similar pictures, just trying to drive the point home. It really does help with these brown spots, tone and texture. Next slide. And next slide. You can see here that people get some discoloration below the eyes as well. And even that discoloration can be improved. And very often after we do the treatment, we put a cosmeceutical on called transoxemic acid, which is known to inhibit pigment production. And that's been very, very helpful and effective with people who have very mottled and uh, speckled skin. Next slide. Similar results in this gentleman. Certainly it can be performed in men, women, and all the sites that we've discussed before. Next slide. Again, you can see this is a woman who has a darker complexion and she can be safely treated and it really does give her a glow and improve her brown spots. Next slide. All right, before we move on to Carolise, um, someone else has a question. Will this help sure. mild rosacea spots? It is not meant for rosacea. The redness that people have, the pimple you get from rosacea, the blood vessels that you get with rosacea are not treated with this laser. However, we do have other devices in the office that we can effectively treat rosacea. Um, we have uh, a YAG and an IPL, which is uh, incredibly effective for redness and blood vessels on the face. Got it. Okay. And one more question. Like other lasers, do I need to stay completely out of the sun between treatments? You don't. You have to, we always caution, we really want you to wear your sun protection and try to avoid the sun, but it won't necessarily be detrimental to the treatment. When you get sun exposure, your skin has memory and those brown spots that we saw so many photos of can come back. These treatments, although effective, they will eventually recur with sun exposure. If you wear your sunblock and you are careful with the amount of sun you get, these spots can be kept at bay for longer periods of time. Okay, great. Well, there's a lot of questions coming in, but do you want to go through the hair portion and then we'll... I, no, I think, I think we could, I think I'd love to answer some of these questions, but okay. I, I want to drive one point home. And that is that in the past, we've had many lasers and we still have lasers in the office that can be very effective with texture and tone. But the problem has always been the amount of downtime, swelling, redness, crusting that occur when we use these devices. And because of all the new research and technology, we've come to, to realize 
that only a superficial injury is needed to get some of these results. Of course, you have to do a few treatments, but the truth is, is that even in the, in the age of COVID, nobody wants the downtime anymore. Nobody wants a red crusty face when they need to be on Zoom calls and be seen in public. Yes, three treatments are involved, but it's very comfortable and it works very well. And I also want to point out one really interesting phenomenon with this new technology and many new technologies to come. We've come to realize that we don't need to destroy the face with super powerful lasers in order to get the result. It seems that even with these superficial injuries that we're causing, we're also causing the release from the injury, the body, it triggers the body to release cytokines and certain pro-inflammatory factors, which are very, very important in the whole rejuvenation process. And those factors are released even after a superficial injury, which is why we don't necessarily need these huge, uh, powerful lasers anymore to get the result. And now I'm ready for questions. Okay. How long should the spots that are lightened last? It really depends on how much sun exposure you're gonna be and how careful you're gonna be in the sun. If you're going to be really diligent about wearing your sunblock, you can get at least a year or two out of it. It's not gonna come back right away, but if you're going to go to the Caribbean and not wear your hat and not be diligent about sunblock, I would say maybe you'll get a year out of it, two years out of it, a year, a year. Got it. Um, what is considered a treatment area? For example, is the face and say shoulders two different treatment areas? Y yes, they are. What we, 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 there, are, there are some people that have asked me just to treat discoloration on their forehead and we can absolutely do that. But there are many people that say, gee, I wanna improve the overall tone and texture of my face. So the face is considered one area, but if somebody insists, I just wanna do my forehead, we can do that. But generally the different areas are the face, the chest, the arms. They can all be done at one time too. There's no, there's no uh, downside to doing that. Can this be done on the neck as well? Absolutely. Great. So how much downtime is there after the treatment? Um, very little. Uh, the, the redness subsides in 10 to 12 hours and you don't really uh, see the roughness that's on the face. That redness is gone pretty quickly. You can go right back and you can go back on Zoom the next day. It's amazing. Um, well, okay, the big question, what is the cost? Ah, well, it's gonna depend upon the areas that you treat and if we're applying cosmeceuticals, but in general to treat a, an entire face is 675 a treatment and there's an additional fee for cosmeceuticals. So it's not cheap but it is effective. And most importantly, it's very safe. Can you have this treatment with fillers? Um, Dr. Loriana, would you like to answer that? Yes, you can have them with fillers, but mind you, I wouldn't do it on the same day that you're having the treatment. We'd probably want to space it apart, but you can have it, you know, you can have the treatment with fillers. And also if you've had fillers beforehand and then getting this treatment, you can, but I still wouldn't do it on the same day, but it can be done. <laughs> and the same thing with Botox, we won't do them on the same day. We would only do this one, this treatment, you can come back a few days later and have something else done, but this should not be done with uh, other, other treatments on the face. Got it, okay. Um, can people with rosacea have this procedure done safely? Dr. Loriana? Um, I do think that patients with rosacea can have this treatment done safely. It depends also on the, you know, the setting or the energy that we put in. If you do have rosacea, we ask you these questions prior. Um, we take that into account when we're picking our energy levels. Um, so yeah, patients with rosacea can have this treatment done safely. How would you treat any leftover brown spots? Well, it really depends on how dark the spots are. We, we have an Alexandrite laser that we often use to do that. Um, uh, and we would in combination may also use this on different settings 
uh, to target some of those brown spots. But uh, I want to be clear that you can't always get rid of every single brown spot on someone's face, even with the best lasers, because some of the best lasers that we have out there can be so destructive that they can leave a discoloration behind from the, uh, from the inflammatory process of removing it. All right, here's a good question for Nancy. Nancy, what's the difference between a laser like this and microneedling? Um, well, this, this laser kind of mimics microneedling in that it destroys tiny little holes in the skin in order to stimulate collagen. <clears throat> with this particular laser, we don't get to the depths that we can with a physical needle, but it's def definitely a little bit more superficial of a depth of destruction. But um, this treatment, interestingly enough, can be combined with fractionated radio frequency microneedling so that that treatment can kind of address the lower levels of the skin to instigate more of a tightening, while the laser combined on top of that treatment can also work on the more superficial levels and pigmentation. That's great. All right. Um, I'd also like to add that even while you're undergoing these treatments, you can certainly uh, come in and see Nancy and do other types of aesthetic work with Nancy, like facials. Um, I don't know that you would necessarily want to do a peel with Nancy, but facials can work really well in conjunction with this. We just don't do it right after the treatment. Um, who performs this treatment at your office? So it, it, it's myself and Dr. Loriano, and we have assistance, but we, Dr. Loriano and myself are actually holding the laser. Um, can you treat the back area? You can treat any place you have skin. Now, um, I have treated a few people on the back, the upper back where they've got discoloration from the sun. And so far I've gotten very nice results on the back as well. Would I treat an entire back? Well, I certainly could, but um, it's a lot of area to treat. But yes, it could be done. All right, Dr. Loriano, can, it, can this help with both vertical and horizontal lines on your forehead? So with those fine lines, yes, it can actually help improve them somewhat. Mind you, not erase them completely. I like how Dr. Schroll put it before, almost like kind of like a Photoshopped effect in terms of helping to minimize their appearance. So yes, it definitely can help improve them. Completely erase them, no, but definitely improve their appearance for sure. Okay, Dr. Cheryl, how about acne scars? So I do believe they, that we can help acne scars. It really depends on the scar. Not every acne scar is created equal. If this is a deep scar, I would say absolutely not. But as I said before, the interesting uh, findings with some of these devices is that the effect of the superficial injury is creating an inflammatory response that helps with the healing process. So I certainly could never guarantee that we can, uh, uh, that we can treat an acne scar, maybe improve it. But I don't know that we can improve all acne scars, especially deep ones. All right, two more questions, then let's move on to the hair loss portion. So do most patients opt for anesthesia or what kind of pain? So um, I've done this, uh, Nancy has done it on me. I'm a, I'm a, Nancy's allowed to do it on me, although she can't do it on other people. And um, I will tell you that I did not need anesthesia for it. Everybody that I have offered anesthesia says it's definitely helpful, but what we, the type of anesthesia we give is topical. We have very, very effective topical anesthesia. We basically rub a cream in that has some lidocaine in it. We leave it on for really just 10, 15 minutes. That's all it takes. We wipe it up, wipe it off and you're, and you're good to go. Um, I have done plenty of people with anesthesia and yes, it's a little bit uncomfortable, but it's really not unbearable. No one's gritting their teeth and jumping out of the chair. That's for sure. <laughs> okay, can you get, let's, last question, can you get satisfactory results with two treatments or do you really need three or four and how far apart are the treatments spaced? Um, I, I've done a couple of people with two and they said, you know what, I don't really want to get the third. Uh, they said, I, I'm happy with the two. And, and it's all about um, uh, uh, your happiness with the procedure. Uh, we don't want to disappoint. So I tell everybody you need three. If you're happy with two, I'm thrilled. And I am seeing the results even after the first one. Dr. Loriano, would you agree? 
Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. A lot of people are very pleasantly surprised, even after one treatment, how they're seeing the just the reduction in their pigmentation. They're just they're seeing results. So I say it's patient dependent. You know, if you look in the mirror and you're happy, then after two, there you go. <laughs> Got it. Okay, so before we move on to the Carolase component of this device, um, I do want to remind everyone we're giving away a complimentary Laze MD treatment, um, which we're very excited about. So if you guys don't mind in the chat, if you could put your name and email in the chat, we're going to use a random chooser that I can get going during this next section to make sure that it's totally fair and a random selection for the winner. So if you want to do that in the Q&A or chat, I'll grab them from either place. All right, back to you, Dr. Cheryl. So as I mentioned, the technology is, is really moving along at a rapid pace. And uh, with that, had we, they, this particular company, Lutronic, has developed something called Carolase. And Carolase is basically the term used when we use the device we were just speaking about and pair that with a cosmeceutical, a topical product, product called Carifactor. Next slide, please. And really this is a whole new category where I was discussing before laser-assisted delivery of, of medication, well, laser-assisted uh, delivery of growth factors. And the Lutronic, as we discussed, creates these microchannels, and this helps increase absorption of, of compounds. And what was, what was developed is this product called Carifactor. And what it is, is a proprietary type of growth factor. Uh, growth factors, which uh, they have found increase the, and stimulate hair growth um, for men and women as well. Next slide. So Carifactor is an in-office therapy and it's combined with the use of the Lutronic Laser MD laser that we've been discussing so far. And this is a patented formula, a formula developed by a dermatologist who basically looked at all of the uh, elements of PRP. What's in PRP? Well, when we, we take your blood, we spin it down and we re-inject all these growth factors. Next slide, please. Um, and they looked at what was what is what is in PRP that that helps improve the tone texture when we do uh, uh, what's it called, Dr. Loriana? You've been doing this the the vampire oh patient. vampire yeah <laughs> or <laughs> when we vampire. use or when we use PRP uh, spin down the blood and we inject it into the scalp to help hair growth. Well, they looked at what was in there and they basically found the factors that helped hair growth and the factors that inhibited hair growth because there's really both in PRP. And that's how they came up with Carifactor. They took all the pro-growth factors that they found in the uh, platelet-rich plasma and they, they made it into this, this topical called Carifactor. And what makes Carifactor a little bit different is number one, it's not injected into the scalp. It's applied after we made, it's applied after we put these micro channels in, but it's also encased in something called the nanoliposome. And that's a delivery mechanism so that it's well absorbed into these little micro channels that we've created. And it's all growth factor. It's not minoxidil. It's not hormones. It's not finasteride. It, it's a proprietary type of growth factor, which can help grow hair. Next slide. And you can sort of see here in some of these diagrams um, that the nanoliposomes um, are smaller and uh, you get better penetration because of the way they're encased in these liposomes. And you need to get down to the hair follicle. And that's what that little diagram is on, on the right. You got to get it pretty deep down there. So when we create the micro channels with a laser and encase these growth factors in the liposome, we're really trying to get the most efficient absorption of the product to stimulate the hair growth. Next slide. So the question is, how does it compare to PRP? Well, Dr. Loriano does PRP. I'm going to probably start to do some PRP. There's no doubt that PRP is helpful. Carifactor is really state of the art. It's brand new, but it seems to be holding up and can be as good as PRP. The difference here is needles. Do we need to inject PRP? 
Well, it has been injected in the past, but I'm gonna leave this to Dr. Loriana to talk to you a little bit about PRP and how PRP can probably be used with a Lutronic. Yeah. Dr. Loriana? So classically, PRP, if you were to come in for a treatment at the office, what we do is actually we, we draw a vial of your blood. Um, and then we take that blood and we spin it down in a centrifuge and that that spinning motion separates your cells in your blood and that goes to the bottom and then your um, your platelet or the platelet rich plasma comes to the top and in in this plasma or in this solution are different growth factors that your body naturally produces um, and how we use it for hair growth is then we then harness that PRP, that platelet-rich plasma, we put it into syringes and actually we inject it right into the level of the hair follicle on the scalp. Um, and then the, the premise behind it is that these growth factors are going to then stimulate hair growth at the level of the hair follicle as we're injecting. But what's interesting is that now with the use of LaceMD, our, our new laser, this laser is able to make these little micro channels of just injury and just these little, these little channels where in essence, we can actually take, you know, do a, a PRP treatment, take your blood, take your own plasma, and in essence, put it on top. And those micro channels will then help that PRP to be absorbed, or we then can kind of like skip that, that step of injecting it. So it's, it's kind of awesome using, you know, this laser, we can use Carifactor, which seems kind of like taking PRP to the next level as, we, you know, it's innovative using different technologies, taking all the good stuff from PRP and making it just like far superior. But it, in essence, we can still use even the PRP that we have and use the LaceMD to deliver it into the scalp. It's kind of awesome. <laughs> I think we can go to the next slide. So this basically shows you the difference between the variability of PRP and Carolase. Uh, the question is, is Carolase going to be better than PRP or is it going to be same as PRP or worse? We don't, we don't really know. We definitely know that Carolase is effective. We know that PRP is effective. It's really not clear quite yet because Carolase is just that new. Next slide. So this slide basically goes over the pros and the cons of Carolase versus PRP. Again, we're gonna be doing both. Um, we're gonna to talk to our patients. You're gonna come in for a consult. We'll go over which, which one you, you, you choose to do, but we have both available in the office. And frankly, I think that with time, uh, we'll have more uh, data, not my, not uh, we will have more data, but also the, the dermatology community will have more data to say if in fact one is better than the other, but we know they both work. Can Carolase be a little easier to do? Yes, we don't have to take your blood. We don't have to spin it down. We just have to run the laser over your scalp and then just rub in the Carolase. On the other hand, Taking your blood, spinning it down is just not that big a deal. It, it really just takes us a few short minutes to do. And then you can choose to inject it into the scalp or you can choose to laser and then rub it into the scalp. So we're gonna have all kinds of options for our patients going forward. Next slide, please. So it's a simple protocol. I think we've already mentioned it. We do it every two weeks. It's fairly quick. It takes us just a few minutes to make the little micro channels with a laser and then the care factor is rubbed in. So I would say a total maximum of 10 to 15 minutes. Next slide, please. Just some slides showing you of uh, the improvement in hair growth with Carolase. And I think some of these are pretty dramatic and you can see the before and then it's, it's really about three months later, uh, a little bit over three months that there is some significant growth. Next slide, please. This is a very, very important slide because um, you can see that there's certainly increased growth, but I've also uh, noted that there's also a little bit of thickness, a little bit more density of uh, thickness of the hair, hair itself. Next slide, please. And again, just showing you um, the increased diameter and, and, and that I do start, I have seen even on myself, I tried it on myself. Next slide, please. 
again, somebody who has fairly significant uh, hair loss in the front and certainly has some nice hair growth back. Is it perfect? Is it back to full density? No, but perhaps if she kept on treating, she'd get more back. I can't ever say it would be full, but it's a significant improvement. Next slide. And again, showing you diameter before, you know, it's 0.5 millimeters and then after 0.72. So, you know, you've got a significant increase in the diameter of the actual hairs themselves, and that's gonna make you look a little bit thicker. Next slide, please. Again, more uh, improvement in the overall appearance. Next slide, please. They do an actual hair count looking at actually, they take a section, section it off, two centimeters, centimeter, and they actually do a hair count and you can see that there's an increased amount of hairs. Next slide, please. Again, showing increased diameter. Next slide, please. Again, showing you increased uh, volume of, of hair in the site and increased uh, density. Next slide. And again, just like more debt, more slides showing you an increase, improvement in the diameter of the actual hair itself. Next slide. Fairly dramatic from one of my colleagues um, of a hair loss um, that almost looks like it's partially scarring. And scarring hair loss is not easy to treat, very hard to get hair back, but she did get some very significant improvement in this patient. Next slide, please. And next slide. Just giving you an idea, we can't make all the hair come back, but can we improve you? Yes, we absolutely can improve you. Next slide. So going from really no hair to some hair is, is significant. The fact that we can cause any growth at all. Next slide. A widened part that is significantly improved. Next slide. Again, these widened parts can be very, very upsetting in, in women and being able to improve this is, is significant. Next slide. And that concludes our presentation. I'm happy to answer any more questions as with Dr. Laureano and Nancy. But in conclusion, I would like to just uh, thank you all for joining us tonight and let you know that we are busy looking at all kinds of new technology to bring into the office to in, improve um, texture, tone, hair growth, uh, what, whatever is out there, we are looking into it to try and bring our patients the latest and most up-to-date technology available. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Cheryl. So there are a number of questions for you. Um, and I'll take this off the screen so you guys can see all of the um, beautiful doctors and Nancy together. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, if anyone wants to take a screenshot or uh, write down the phone number, this would be the time. So let's get started with the, and then we'll do the giveaway. So let's get started with the questions. So does age play a factor on the results of the hair growth? It's a good question. And I suspect that perhaps you won't get as good a result in someone that is older. When I say older, I'm saying uh, 75 plus. Uh, and I think it also depends on the amount of hair loss. I have not seen any medical evidence to support that. It's just my own feeling that you won't, the younger a patient is, I think that you're probably going to get a little bit of a result. Uh, but the more severe the hair loss, it's also going to be hard to get as good a result as someone that has just a little bit of thinning. Dr. Gloriana, do you have any, any, uh, any, any else to add on that? I think you're right. It's a hard question. It's, it's, you know, I guess every patient it's unpredictable, you know, I think maybe with time we'll have more answers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I will tell you, if we don't think we're going to get a result, we're not treating you. Yeah. No. <laughs> so how painful is PRP? So I, I guess that's um, patient dependent, right? I mean, it is, you know, there 
they're needles that we are, you know, injecting into the scalp. So thus, you know, we try to mitigate those, um, you know, the pain a little bit. Um, I actually can use a tool that it's like a vibratory tool that kind of like tricks your nerves a little bit. So you feel a little bit less pain, but it's, it's not the most comfortable thing. I have to admit it is, we are using needles and we are, you know, injecting them in various locations in the scalp. So, um, mind you patient dependent, if you're good with tolerating pain, I think you might be okay. <laughs> well, we all, we also, Dr. Laura, I'll tell them a little bit about Pronox because that, that can help get people take the edge. Oh. That is true. We do have Pronox or a little bit of nitrous oxide, also known as laughing gas, <laughs> available um, to be used if you would like. Not, you know, you don't have to if you don't want to. Um, and the way it works is actually as you, you know, with the treatment, as you're inhaling the nitrous oxide, um, it's it's working while you're inhaling it. Once you are done, you know, you you and you're breathing normally, it's not like this the effect lingers on. It actually is something after using, you will be back to normal and you'll be able to drive home, <laughs> but it can help take the edge off. <laughs> so does Carolace require ongoing treatments? You're, there, there is maintenance involved, yes. Uh, the, the, the recommended regimen is to treat somebody every two weeks for a total of six treatments. So that's over 12 weeks. And I suspect maintenance would be, I, 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 it's going to depend on the patient, but I would suspect you'd have to do a maintenance treatment every, once every four months. All so right. not terrible. Well, look, if, 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 if you do a treatment and you're maintaining, totally up to the patient whether they want to come for any maintenance. All right, what is the big question, the cost? It's gonna depend, are we doing your whole scalp? Are we doing just the front? So we do, it really depends what we're doing. But you can, you can, you can pretty much um, uh, think that the range is gonna be anywhere is between 400 and 675 a treatment. And if you, if you look at um, the cost of, of doing, and, and that's for the Lutronic, not PRP. If you look at the cost of doing hair replacement transplant, um, you know you're looking at a, a very very expensive uh, procedure, and it's a it's an excellent procedure. I want to tell you, transplant really does work on the right candidates, but it's it's incredibly expensive. So um, it it this this treatment, although not cheap, it it it, it is it is a, a reasonable price when you look at the wide range of of options available. All right, I hope I don't say this wrong. Can Carolase be used to treat cicatricial alopecia? That's a really good question. And one of those patients had cicatricial alopecia. Cicatricial alopecia is a scarring type of hair loss. Totally different than female pattern hair loss and male pattern baldness. There's actually scarring of the follicle, the follicle is scarred down. So theoretically you can't bring the follicle back. But interestingly enough, one of my colleagues has gotten some hair to regrow, which I believe is due to the fact that although it's a scarring alopecia and many of the follicles are destroyed, there probably are some viable follicles that are treatable. But overall, I would say no, it's really not a treatment for cicatricial alopecia. And do we know how long the hair growth lasts? We don't know. We're, we're stimulating the growth with the growth factors. Hopefully it'll continue to grow. Maybe we'll, we'll bump it up into a growing phase with the, with the, with the Carolase, but we don't know that. But assuming um, that you're happy with the results and you don't want to do maintenance, if you feel like you're losing uh, your hair again, we can restart treatment. All right, we have time for just a couple more questions. So if anyone has anything, even if it's slightly off topic, especially for Nancy, since she's here. Um, I, um, oh, okay. How many treatments of the laser is considered the basic? Um, if we're talking about texture, tone, fine lines, three treatments, spaced one month apart, people can do four too, you know, and it can be, if people are really, really speckled, they may need four, but I would say three. And again, our patients, some of our patients have been happy with two. So it, it, it depends. I have telangiectasias on my lips. Can this help? Dr. Loriano? I don't think so. I don't think, yeah, this laser will not be helpful for telangiectasias. So I don't think it will help with that. But we can treat them. We can treat them with our YAG. 
With a different laser, yes. <laughs> for those people that don't know what that word means. Oh, uh, it's, go ahead, Dr. Loriano. Telangic tasers or YAG? Yeah. YAG is a different telangic type of uh, telangic tasia is another word for a blood vessel. Um, and a YAG is a type of laser, different laser than the one we were talking about. <laughs> All right. Um, can you receive laser treatments and then also treatments with Nancy, like microneedling or facials at the same time? You absolutely can, just not, you know, in close proximity within a few days. I don't know that you would do microneedling with these procedures, but Nancy has a whole host of fantastic procedures that she does, but I wouldn't necessarily pair with microneedling, but you can certainly come in and speak to Nancy and myself and Dr. Loriano, and we can come up with a great regimen. Nancy does great work and... Uh, um, we, 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 we've really uh, been, been doing very well with her cosmetic aesthetic eye and our uh, laser technology. So this patient says, um, I wasn't aware you had an esthetician at the practice. Can you quickly tell me the services Nancy offers? Oh, Nancy, <laughs> would you care to answer that? <laughs> Well, we do a full range of, of treatments, anywhere from a basic facial that provides a really thorough cleaning analysis of the skin. We can do product recommendations um, outside of the scope of what our practice offers. Even depending on where you shop, we can help with a, a range of product questions. Um, we can do peels. I think I have a lot of fantastic pigment suppressing acids that can definitely supplement a Lutronic treatment. We can help maintain that brightness and kind of make some more headway on some of the brown spots that were treated with the laser that we can potentially continue to lighten with microdermabrasion, with a series of peels. Um, so really, I customize everything depending on, on what your goals are and what you hope to achieve, what your budget is, and how frequently you can come in. So we really take everything on a case-by-case -case basis. Right. Really glad everyone could hear that. I, I just want to add, though, you know, laser treatments aren't for everybody, and we understand they're not affordable to everybody. But Nancy has a host of treatments that she can offer you um, that can be really effective as well. So keep it in mind if, if, if the, you believe that laser is not for you, that she may be able to help you with your cosmetic needs as well. I also feel like it's a good form of self-care, which we all need right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, uh, let's see. Last question. Uh, oh, well, this is a comment really. This is from Marie. She says, I only had one treatment with the Laser MD and I'm 100% satisfied. I'm away right now in Arizona, but as soon as I come home in June, I will call for another appointment. Thank you, Dr. Cheryl. Great presentation. I highly recommend your service. And I, I thank you very much for the compliment. I really do. Thank you for chiming in. Much appreciated. All right. Final question, and then we'll get to the winner. So uh, is this, is the Laser MD, um, possible to treat actinic keratosis comparable to blue light? That's a great question. Believe it or not, this device is approved by the FDA to treat actinic keratosis. It is approved. That doesn't mean that insurance will pay for it, but they do recognize it as a treatment for actinic keratosis. We have had Lutronic for only four months. We also have photodynamic therapy, also known as Blue U. We get great results with that. Can I say it's going to work better? I can't. I think it's going to depend on, on, on each individual patient and how bad their actinics are. So I, I, I can't say for sure. Um, it's going to really depend on a case-by-case -case basis, just how severe your damage is. Great. Everyone's saying thank you so much. Very informative. Um, so just, I know it's late, but if, if anyone would like to schedule an appointment, you can do so on our website at your own convenience when we're off hours, or um, we'd love to hear from you in the morning if you'd like to call. I, I think if you call, it would be either to Maria, you can maybe post this somehow for us. Maria or Sabrina are gonna be the ones taking the, the phone calls for this to make sure it gets set up properly. Perfect. And maybe you can add that to the email. Perfect. And I'll add that to the chat right now. And now a little drum roll, please, for our winner. The winner is Cassandra. Yeah. Congratulations, Cassandra. <laughs> um, for your own privacy, I won't say your last name, but we will email you and let you know, um, you know, next steps.
But otherwise, I really, um, I'm so thankful for everyone that joined in today. Uh, we got a lot of great comments about this being a great way to learn about a new treatment that's not too scary, like coming in to make an appointment. And it gave people time to think through and ask questions because they always forget when you guys walk in the room when you're with them. So thank you, Dr. Cheryl. Thank you, Dr. Loriano. And thank you, and Thank you, everybody, for attending. And thank you for moderating, Risa. Thank, Thank you, you guys, and we hope to see you all soon in our beautiful new office. If you haven't come visit yet, please do. It's very COVID safe, and we would love to show it off to you all. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have a great evening. Bye. Thank you.